Violet World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 170 Leaving Blue Leaf. With a gout of colorful flames, Elise, Maple, Starlight, and Valet burst into existence under an overhang near the mouth of an alley entering into a prominent main street. Thanks to the hammering rain and mostly open sky, however, the place was largely deserted and what few ponies there were had exactly the same idea and were already grouped in a mouse of alleys. One such group stumbled back, startled at the sudden arrival. Elise frowned apologetically, but the ponies had already retreated further into the city, too skittish to stick around. She sighed and said nothing. Valet, however, whistled. You can teleport three passengers at once and aren't even winded? Maybe you weren't kidding about being strong. I kind of want to fight you now just to see what happens. Is that really a good idea? Maple tapped a hoof against a wooden wall, which responded by threatening to fall off. This isn't a very sturdy place to fight. Nah, probably not. Jumping into a hover, Valet folded her forelegs and shrugged. But why does that ever stop me? Let's not do that right now, Elise agreed. Craning her head around the corner of the alley, she added, However, we do have some time left before the carts arrive. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Valet raised an eyebrow. Like to know? What, like, about stuff? Yes, about stuff, Elise confirmed. And the history of Ironridge... Project Aslan, Sousa's decline, how my household was formed, about Mobius's many lovers, the things we talked about while they were waiting for you. What? You did? Valet turned to Maple, ears folded. And he didn't ask me first? I know everything, remember? To Elise, she added, and ooh, saucy. But isn't he basically senile these days? Maple and Elise looked at each other and Elise yielded. You didn't ask to tell us. Besides, you were busy, and we had nothing better to do. <laughs> Fine, Valet pouted. What's the big deal, Starlight asked from Maple's side. Did you want to tell us yourself? I thought you didn't want us to trust anything you say or something. She squinted and cocked her head. Unless she said something you didn't want us to know? Uh, Valet went cross-eyed. You know what? Never mind. Good on you for remembering that, by the way. Never trust a bat. Under her breath, she added, It's like you can't be obstinate for the sake of being obstinate anymore. So what was that about Mobius being senile? Maple cut in, hoping to head off any possible tension. Eh, he lost his touch. Valet shrugged. Apparently dude used to be super handsome and charming and stuff, but he's basically a gray beard now, only without a beard to be gray. I don't hang around so so much, so I rarely see him, but it sounds like ponies say his mind's going too. Can't be that bad if he's still got the job though, you know? She blinked. Actually, scratch that. I'm about 90% sure Sparky's using him as a puppet so she can call the shots without having to publicly lead a factory and get her hoof sturdy. So maybe he's totally bonkers. But you never know. Maybe his head for numbers is fine and he's just a loon. People go insane in strange ways. That's mostly right, Elise said with a nod. He is older now, and his days of leaving family members in unexpected places are over. The reason ponies say he's losing his sharpness is because he obsessively dotes on Shinespark and makes it his main priority instead of governing. It makes his ponies feel like he's forgotten about them, and when ponies feel forgotten, they need something to blame, Maple finished for her. I get it. I hope she does take care of them then. She does that and a lot more, Valet muttered, smirking. If you knew everything she thinks she can do, you'd think she was the insane one, not her dad. Hmm? Maple's ears perked, swiveling forward. What's she doing? Oh, ho, 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 nope, Valet cackled, wagging a forelimb. Just because I know everything doesn't mean I can tell you, and telling you that would be, uh, not a good idea. Starlight looked sideways at her. Earlier, you said things not being a good idea has never stopped you before. Quitting, Valet shook her head. No, I asked when it had ever stopped me before. It's your fault if you thought that was a rhetorical question. I avoid doing dumb stuff all the time, and in this case, having mud on all the powerhouses down in Sosa, or, at least, stuff that they don't want getting out is an important part of keeping all the fighting in the city friendly, consensual, or involving me. If others knew the stuff I know about them and they ever found out, they'd have nothing to lose. With a wink, she added, In case you're wondering, I've also got dirt on brain. 
It's how I make her do stuff like stopping attacking the defense force for it when she's already frashed all the mooks. Elise coughed loudly, interrupting Valet's speech. Excuse me, but the cards are arriving. A slow caravan trundled its way for the Blue Leaf Main Street. Five wagons with protective coverings and no reins. They moved in a straight line, their bodies in construction wooden, but with metal-spoked wheels and support frames, the mud underneath them shimmering with reflected mantelite. Instead of the rickety, cobbling click-clack of hooves against earth and squeaky axle starlight usually associated with pull carts, they emitted a soft, constant hum that was barely audible over the rain's violent hiss, and in less than a minute had reached the alley where the four ponies waited. A lee slit her horn, its residual darkening effects making little difference against a storm-blackened world, pulling light from glowing doorways and street lamps and manifesting an aura of colorful flame around Maple. Nodding at Valet, she asked, You carry Starlight and I'll lift Maple? Starlight frowned, but at the rate the carts were moving, they barely had time for goodbyes, let alone arguing over how they would board the passing carts. So she squared her shoulders and stood still, letting Valet grab her with a careful foreleg. A single second of flight later, and she was in the wagon, Valet setting her down and straightening the fur on her leg. She shook loose the droplets of water that had already managed to accumulate in her mane, exhaled, and moved to the back where Maple was floating in, surrounded by flame. On the road behind them, Elise was standing, waving, and then under the cart moved between them, blocking the unicorn from view. Phew! Maple shivered heavily, having taken much more water than Starlight did. Well, we're moving again. Yep. Valet nodded, staring up at the curved white canvas roof overhead. At this rate, though, we're gonna have a long lot of downtime. A silence passed, and Maple joined Starlight in looking out the back. You know, she said, I've only been levitated by unicorn magic twice in my life, and both times have been over the last two days. And it feels weird. Valet shuddered. Yeah, getting caught in auras is nasty. If they know what they're doing, they'll try to stop you from flying out, and things can get bad fast when you're immobilized. That's why you always want to carry something to throw in a fight. Maple shook her head. Well, I'm talking about just for normal things, and you're used to flying. For me, it's having the ground that far away and moving without me being able to do anything about it. I fell a lot once, Starlight added. It felt different when she lifted me and when Selma lifted me too, Maple mused. Selma's aura reminded me of swimming, like it was a very thick liquid that was all around me. Hers felt more like multiple big points. I wonder if she was doing something differently, or if her magic works different in addition to the way it looks. Starlight was silent, so Maple continued to muse. Her magic sure was pretty, at least. And she was nice to us, too. She didn't even press when I said we didn't want to talk about what we had been doing in the Stone District. I hope we find more ponies like her. Yeah, she was great. Valet nodded sagely. Small, too. I know I'd be down for running into her again. Small? Maple blinked. What does that have to do with anything? Valet grinned, completely unapologetic. Well, that's my kink. End of chapter 170